Okay, my, my name is Neil Marshall. I work for Cognition Consulting in Qatar and I'm working with the uh, Supreme Education Council for helping them with the reform of the schools. The workshop that I'm doing today is a very hands-on workshop for teachers showing them how they can use a piece of software called GeoGebra which is freeware and is a dynamic geometry software. Using this software they can use a inquiry approach teaching method for students and it can be used to explore geometry uh, properties of angles in circles, polygons and things like that. It can also be in, used to investigate properties of functions um, for example looking at what happens when you transform functions uh, reflection, translation and things like that and it's also extremely interesting down at the primary end uh, for creating patterns and things like that and the focus of the workshop is to try and introduce teachers to how they can use it in the classroom and to provide them with some instructions so that they can actually begin to create their own documents which they can use with students in the classroom. I've used this with the teachers that I'm working with at Mohammed bin Abdul Wahab school and it's been a tremendous success and in particular the te maths teachers that I've been working with were thrilled to discover that students and classes that they had found previously difficult to engage in the learning because it was interactive and because it was IT suddenly found that their students were really enjoying themselves so I think it's a really powerful way of making lessons interesting and mathematics much more accessible and to give the students an opportunity to explore what's going on instead of just telling them what's going on. It's, it's fantastic stuff. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Michelle Conway from Cambridge University Press and yesterday and today I'm giving workshops on making the most of your interactive whiteboard. I teach people how to use interactive whiteboards in their classroom. I'm a great believer in the correct use of technology in the classroom and the importance of training people to use the technology properly. And to me, proper training involves setting everything in context. So what I'm trying to do here is sitting teachers down behind a computer that has whiteboard software on it and then showing them some basic techniques for using their interactive whiteboard. So I'm not just standing at the front showing them, they are actually working with me and preparing the work as they go along. I try to set everything into context so that they have something that tomorrow they can walk into their classroom and use easily. I'm trying to give them greater knowledge of how the technology can be applied in a meaningful way to improve teaching and learning in their classroom. Thank you very much for your time. Hi, my name is Sheree McLeod. I work at the Teaching and Learning Centre here at the College of North Atlantic. And today at ICT Qatar, I talked about collaborative learning tools. We looked at five different tools, wikis, SlideShare, Google Docs, VoiceThread, and blogs. So the teachers in this workshop actually did some work. I introduced them to the ideas, the basic ideas of what you can do with these tools and then I sent them to a website to do some further investigation and to work with a partner to decide how they might use this tool in their class next week. So that's what we did today. Okay, hello, I'm Julie Lindsay and I'm Head of Information Technology and E-Learning at Qatar Academy. Today I'm really pleased to be at the ICT in Education conference. I'm presenting a workshop session this morning on Web 2.0 tools. In particular I'm focusing on Web 2.0 tools that will help people set up uh, an e-portfolio or digital portfolio. I'm looking at the use of a wiki as a, um, a, an online web publishing tool and as well as, a, a, as that a collaboration tool. I'm looking at uh, uh, social bookmarking, which is uh, using a tool such as Delicious or Digo to um, store your bookmarks online, to share those bookmarks and to network with other people who are also researching and, and storing bookmarks. 
Uh, I'm going to look at uh, RSS, which is really simple syndication, which is a, a whole revolution. I mean, it's not new, but it's, it's still a revolution to, and new to a lot of people uh, in terms of um, syndicating the information to come to you rather than you having to find the information out there. So you can, you can uh, subscribe to a blog, you can subscribe to, a, to an RSS feed on you know, various websites. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, to look at that and setting up a digital portfolio using a, a wiki as a as a central sort of uh, organisation force as well. This afternoon I'm presenting on um, uh, what I do, which is flat classroom projects, and my presentation is called Digiteens Go Global. So I'm focusing particularly on what students are doing in the projects, and and uh, I've been running these projects in conjunction with a colleague of mine from America, Vicky Davis. Uh, we've been doing this for two and a half years and we have a series of what we call flat classroom projects uh, and Digiteen is actually one of those. The Digiteen project mm -hmm. is for students to explore and um, discuss and collaborate on issues to do with digital citizenship um, and how to be a reliable and responsible learner in, on, in on, online spaces. Uh, so the, uh, the presentation is going to focus on that. It's also going to uh, give people an idea of what happened in Qatar about six weeks ago when we ran the Flat Classroom Conference, which was also supported and sponsored by ICT Qatar. And at that event, we brought um, 130 people together. Most, uh, a lot of those were international people. In fact, we brought 40 students. We ran a, four, uh, a student summit. And we brought 40 students, most of which were international students, came into Qatar from you know, America, Pakistan, India, Ethiopia, uh, Australia, various countries. Uh, and we, we looked at you know, what it means to be a digital citizen. We looked at how we can use these Web 2.0 tools to um, um, explore, discuss, uh, look at social issues, uh, global issues, and to take action on these issues and create collaborations that can possibly make a difference in the world. So it's sort of bringing the two ideas together, this Web 2.0 idea and the, um, using the, the power of, of uh, young people and this digital citizenship idea together. So I'm going to show how powerful that conference was. Thank you very much for your time. So my name is Sylvia Martinez and I just uh, did a, a session on games and education. Um, and I think the, the, the biggest issue is that there's a lot of wishful thinking that goes on in schools that because kids like games and kids don't like school that if we somehow combine them it'll all work out and really it doesn't it it doesn't combine very well so what we see is a lot of a lot of um, computer experiences that are sold to teachers as games that are game like but they're not fun um, they might cover curriculum, they might be practice for a certain subject like your multiplication tables, but they're not really the immersive experience that you want from a game. Um, so what I was talking about is different things that do uh, promise to change education. Um, and I think the biggest factor is actually the teacher. People think, well, if a kid's playing a game on chemistry or something, it'll just replace the teacher. Mm -hmm. And I think that's completely untrue. Mm -hmm. um, I think the teacher is actually even more important because the game experience tends to be very unique, mm -hmm. whereas some students might go through a game um, learning a lot of content and puzzling the game out. Some students might go through just, you know, racing through and learning how to how to play, they may collaborate with other students and figuring out tips, you know, gaming the game. Um, and it, it takes someone, an adult, who understands the big picture to wrap all those experiences together. Otherwise, you might think that chemistry is just about, you know, pushing buttons, which it's not. So I think the, the role of the teacher in bringing games to the classroom is crucial uh, and not very well understood. And I also think that students designing games is really the best way to go, where the student has control over the entire experience. They're learning how to control the computer mm. instead of learning someone else's rules. Mm. So 
Um, I think I spent probably the, the last third of the, of the session talking about that and how teachers can teach programming, that there are lots of programming languages for every kind of teacher, for every kind of curriculum area. And um, students can very successfully learn to build their own games and learn incredibly important um, skills like troubleshooting, um, working through adversity, collaboration, because no one knows all the rules. You know, no one knows exactly how the, a game is going to work. You have to ask your neighbor. You have to ask someone else. You know, so you learn a lot of things that aren't taught in a textbook. Because when you're using technology, if you're using anything from the future, the answers aren't in the back of the book. So you have to figure out how to do it yourself. And teaching, te teaching kids game design teaches those things. Thank you for your time, and we hope to see you soon in another conference.